Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLine DL380 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on RAID. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. Tell a little bit more about the HPE ProLine DL380 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. So this video, what we're going to do as a whole, uh, we're going to go over the different types of RAID. We're going to actually do a close-up and just show you a quick picture and compare the mezzanine cards versus the PCIe cards. Then we're going to put up a chart that compares all the different RAID levels, the cache, the uh, PCIe version. And then we're going to show you how to do step-by-step -step instructions on how to configure the RAID. So yes, there's going to be a lot going on in this video, so let's just hop in and get started. All right, so I threw my ESD gear on real quick because I wanted to show you just a quick close-up of uh, just a few of the uh, types of RAID cards. I also wanted to point out that you're going to need a T15. That's going to be the bit. It's not a regular Phillips head, but that will be the bit that you're going to need to be able to install your mezzanine card, which brings us to the two different types. So I wanted to show you here's the mezzanine card, which there is a carved-out slot in the middle of the motherboard for the mezzanine card. And then this is your PCIe version. Again, I'm a big fan of the mezzanine card. It's not as big a deal with the uh, 380 because there are six PCIe slots in the back, but if you're having a, a one use server like a 360 Gen 9 and you don't have as many PCIe slots, you want to preserve them for other things, so using the mezzanine card is a great solution. Now, with something like a 2U like this, you can just go with whatever's the cheapest option and you're going to get you know, the same either way. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to point out is the battery. The battery with uh, someone like Dell, for instance, is built into the RAID card. Now, with uh, um, HP, that is not necessarily the case. So if you want to use the smart battery, you need to make sure that you buy that separately. And we'll show you where that's installed in the front. But I wanted to highlight that because that is an important addition to make sure when you are buying your RAID that you get both pieces because they are sold separately. All right, so uh, now let's hop in and we'll show you the uh, a chart here that we put together that has the different types of RAID. So first off, the onboard software RAID is going to be an HPE B140i. Again, it's the onboard software RAID. It's going to have RAID levels of 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 5, and 10. There's no cache and it has to use the actual memory modules in the system uh, to be able to even have a little bit of cache. Um, so that's definitely a disadvantage as a whole. And it does not support SAS and it's 3 gigabit per second for SATA. PCI agent is not available and it's a software RAID, of course. Next up is our P440A are. This is going to be two gigabytes of cache, and it's going to be RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple, and 10 triple. 12 for SAS, 6 for SATA for the drive speeds, PCIe 3.0, and of course it's a hardware RAID. Next up is the P440. This is going to be four gigabytes of cache, RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple, 10 triple, 12 for SATA. 6 for SATA, PCI 3.0, and Hardware RAID. Next up is HPE P840AR. It's going to have 2 gigabytes for your cache, RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple, and 10 triple. It's going to have 12 for SAS and 6 for SATA. PCI 3.0, Hardware RAID. Next up is going to be our P840 going to be four gigabytes for your cache, RAID levels of 0, 1, 5, 6, 10, 50, 60, 1 triple, 10 triple, 6 for SATA, 12 for SAS, PCIe 3.0, hardware RAID. Next up is our H240AR. It's going to be an HBA, RAID levels of 0, 1, and 5, no cache. It's going to be memory support, 12 for SAS, 6 for SATA, PCA 3.0 hardware RAID. Next up is the H240 HBA. RAID levels of 0, 1, and 5, the same as the 240 AR, but also offers 10, and it's going to be no cache. There's going to be uh, just your, your memory support, essentially 12 for SAS, 6 for SATA, PCA 3.0. And then the last that we have here is going to be the H. 241 HBA, RAID levels of 0, 1, and 5, no cache, memory support, 12 for SAS, 6 for SATA, PCA 3.0. So now that we've uh, just know a little bit more about our RAID options, put up our chart, let's show you how to actually install them, and then at the end we'll show you how to configure them. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We're safe to do our install. So I laid up uh, everything we're going to use right now. So here's the PCIe version. I'm going to install the FLOM. You're going to need a 
T15 bit, which is not a regular Phillips head. That's what will actually go for right here. And then the smart battery, which actually is installed in the front, that we'll do at the very, very end. I'll have to actually rotate this around in a minute. But we're going to go ahead and start with our FLOM. So we'll put everything to the side on our ASD mat, pop our latch and we are in. So just for the sake of uh, this video, you don't have to do this at home. So if you're you know, installing this, you do not need to remove the air baffle. But again, this is just for the sake of the video. We're gonna take our air baffle out just so that you can get a better view as a whole. So for the FLOM, you will notice that right here, there's these two circles that are carved out. The second one right there is what we're gonna put into this little metal peg and this little carved out notch right here, it's like a half circle, is gonna go against this metal peg. That's, that'll be how you line it up, and when you do that, the three threads that you're seeing here will go for the three screws, and then of course your connector will go in as well, but I like to start with the first uh, hole, or really it's the second hole for the peg down here. Now, you can remove your riser, or you can just slide it in perfectly, it's up to you. I'm just gonna slide it in nice and gently, because I've done this before plenty of times. Uh, might be easier at home to remove your riser, but if you do it just delicately enough, you can get it in and you can set it down. If you, if you have trouble doing that to remove the riser, you just unscrew both of these and you lift this straight up and you do have to use a little bit of elbow grease to get this up, but that's how you would actually do it. But again, if you slide it in just enough, you have to get it under this white connector and above the little peg, you can get it in just fine. So, all right, first thing that I like to do is I actually just like to push it in and plug it in to get it started and make sure that everything's lined up. And then I'm gonna take my bit right here and we're just gonna go ahead and start screwing it in. And I like to use a manual screwdriver personally just because the manual screwdriver, you can really feel the uh, the card tightening to the uh, to the motherboard and it's less likely to strip. But again, to each their own, we have to use electric sometime. If we have to bang out 100 servers in a day, then we're gonna need to use the electric screwdrivers. So, uh, all right, now that the FLOM is actually installed, we need to connect the two ports, which is really simple. The cable is gonna be labeled port two versus port one. Now this is actually a good thing to, uh, to point out. The cables are not the same for every single uh, type of RAID card. So for instance, the PCIe version that I'm about to install, you notice how, how big this is. If you were to try to plug this in, it's not gonna fit. So you have some slimmer connectors that will fit down here, and you have some fatter ones that'll fit right here. So depending on the RAID card that you have will depend on the RAID cable that you're gonna need. But anyhow, for the one that we're gonna use, we're gonna go ahead and pop this in. And it's just that simple. So that's how you would install your RAID card. Hey, this is Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to configure RAID. Specifically in this video, we're gonna be configuring RAID 1, but if you wanted to configure RAID 5, the steps shown in this video are going to be very similar. I would also like to mention that if you are configuring a different RAID level, such as RAID 5, you will have a different minimum drive requirement. RAID 5, for instance, is going to utilize three drives or more, while RAID 1 is going to use two drives. So depending on what RAID level you want to go ahead and move along with, just go ahead and research what requirements there are. But if you want to go ahead and follow along with us to configure RAID 1, you just need to install two drives of the same capacity into your server. And then once you've done that, we're all good to get started. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and power on your server. And during post, you want to press F10. Once the menu loads, we want to go ahead and click on HPE Smart Storage Administrator. Doing so, we're going to be loaded into the Smart Storage Administrator menu, so it may take a few minutes till it loads fully. So while we wait, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward, and then we'll go ahead and pick it back up. Once the menu is loaded, if you look on the left hand side of the screen, you can see where it says Array Controllers. And then we can see our smart HBA H240AR. This is the RAID controller that we currently have installed. If you have another one installed, it will show a different name. We're going to go ahead and click on the RAID controller that we want to use. 
Once we click on that, a menu is going to pop up on the right hand side. We want to go ahead and click on this configure button. Afterwards, we'll have a few more options pop up. So we want to click on this option that is at the very top that says create array. And in here, you will see all the drives that we have installed on our server. We have two 160 gigabyte SATA SSDs that we're going to be using. We want our RAID array to span across these two drives. So we want to click on this checkbox that says select all. And then once our drives are selected, we want to go to, to the bottom right and click on create array. So this screen will pull up a few more options. As you can see at the very top where it says RAID level, we can go ahead and pick between RAID 0 and 1. We're going to go ahead and leave it selected at 1. And then we're going to go ahead and leave everything selected as is. And then we can go ahead and click on create logical drive. Next, it'll ask us if we want to continue. So we can just go ahead and click on yes. And then now we can just go ahead and click on finish. Now, if we go ahead and look on the left hand side of the screen, we can see where it says logical devices and we're going to go ahead and click on that. And in here, it's going to go ahead and show us our RAID array. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and reboot our server. So we can click on this X in the top right hand corner of the screen. And then it'll ask us if we're sure that we want to exit the application. So we're going to click on OK. And then now we can press this power button that is on the top right of the screen. And then we're going to click reboot. And that's it. We have successfully created a RAID array with our newly installed RAID controller. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you want to do this with a different RAID level, you can follow the same exact steps and you should be able to do so. Just make sure you do the research on how many drives you need for your desired RAID level and you should be good to go. All right, so in order to install your smart battery, we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop our fan bank out here. And let's toss this to the side. So the blue clip right here in this little carved out notch in this white connector, that's what you're going to need. So I like to start by taking this little point right there, put this in, slide this down against the blue, and it'll just clip into place right here so you might have to push a little bit and then you see it lock into place and then we're going to take our connector and just plug it right in and that's it and now you've added your battery so if you made it this far hey do us a favor click that like smash that subscribe and if you're looking for any custom built servers or even just upgrades please email us at sales at cloudinage.com at sales at cloudinage.com we do hpe we do dell we do ibm super micro cisco if you need new if you need used we like to cover the whole life cycle and be a one-stop shop so please give us an opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business thanks for stopping by take care guys